All right, welcome to Structure Pro. This video is going to be about Mohr's circle for 3D stresses. So in previous videos, we've covered Mohr's circle for 2D stresses or plane stresses, and that's shown here. Here we have our typical 2D plane stress scenario. There's only three unknowns, and it's fairly simple. We can label our sigma y, sigma x, the normal stresses, and tau xy, the shear stress. And we know that we have equations for transformation that we can use to rotate this and find different stresses for different angles of rotation. And in particular, we can find the principal stresses, which are key. They're when the shear stresses disappear on the faces of the element, and we're left with the maximum and minimum values of normal stress. But this, folks, is not the whole story, okay? In fact, it's as if we've been living our whole stress analysis lives like we're allergic to peanut butter. And now, that allergy has gone away and they're gonna show us what peanut butter tastes like. And it's amazing. And so that's what's happening here. I'm gonna show you the peanut butter of stresses. This is one of those situations when you're gonna wanna hold on to your brain so it doesn't explode. So check this out. We can draw an equivalent of our 2D plane stress in 3D, all right? And look at the front face. No shear stress, but there is a normal stress, and it's equal to zero. I guess you could say there's a shear stress that's equal to zero as well, but the point is, there is an out-of-plane normal stress, it's just equal to zero. And what's even more mind-boggling is that it's a principal stress. Okay, so let's head down here. And let's look at the situation where we have transformed our stresses into the principal stresses. And you can see the previous videos on how to do that in two dimensions. And now we can draw these three lines. For whatever reason, that means that they're equivalent. So this shape on the left and right are equivalent. We can draw this transformed 2D analysis in 3D as well. And we notice we've actually rotated it about the z-axis the one that's kind of into the page. And the neat thing is that transformation, the transformation that we've done on the xy plane, rotating it about the z axis, doesn't actually affect the z plane stresses, okay? So we still have this case where we have a sigma z and it's equal to zero. And it's still a principal stress because there's no shear stress that has arisen as a result of our transformation. Doesn't affect it, okay? And now we can label what we used to call sigma max and sigma min in both these shapes. But here's the question. Is that sigma min really the smallest stress? Is it? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So I've placed the old equations that we're used to from a plane stress analysis up at the top here. And I've also placed the 2D Mohr circle that we're familiar with. And if you're not, you can just view the previous videos that I've done on that. And that was actually done on the XY plane, okay? We recognize that all the subscripts in our equations were X's and Y's. But now we have this 3D Mohr circle. And it's, not, it's nothing to be scared about. It's actually just three 2D Mohr circles. We still have this XY plane one, and it's actually identical to the one from the 2D. But now we have an XZ plane one and a ZY plane one. They each have their own centers, which are the same equations as before. It's the average of, for the XY plane, it's sigma X and sigma Y. And for the XZ plane one, it's sigma X and sigma Z, and so on. I guess I should be calling this Z in case there's some Americans out there, but oh well. So sigma max is in this case the same as it was in the 2D representation. But we note that sigma min has changed and our old sigma min is now this weird sigma middle thing we'll call. We also notice that our tau max, our maximum shear stress, is no longer the max. We have a larger maximum shear stress if we consider the third dimension here. And also we notice that our sigma min is no longer the min. I guess we already said that. We have a new sigma min which is equal to zero. Now there is something important here that I want to mention, so listen up, I'm not going to write it down, but our sigma max and sigma min won't always change. 
if we had had sigma max and sigma min with opposite signs, meaning one was compressive and one was tensile, our out-of-plane stress, sigma z, would have fallen in between the two, and it wouldn't have made a difference. You see, so if we were straddling this zero line with one on each side of it, then our tau max would still be our overall tau max. That's important to remember. It's only when our two stresses from our plane stress analysis are of the same sign that we're getting a fake tau max, essentially, when we analyze it in two dimensions. Now, of course, your out-of-plane stress doesn't have to be zero. And if it's not zero, we don't have a principal stress at the origin of our Morse circle diagram. And then things are changing. So this video is mostly approaching the 3D Morse circle from the perspective that we previously had of plane stress in two dimensions. But it's still helpful, I think. Now, before we sign off, the last thing I want to bring your attention to is that in the 2D analysis, the plane stress analysis, all stress states were on the circle. But I mean by that was you could follow the circumference of the circle and that, that was all the stress states that were possible. Now, we have a different case. Now in the 3D case, this area that I'm hatching, all these stress states are possible. But if we're not on the edge of a circle, that means all three of our faces have a shear stress on them. So if you're on a circle, then we're still in a state of plane stress. So I'm writing here, all plane state stress states are on a circle. So that's handy to remember as well. Note that we have a new equation for tau max, and that's tau max is half of the maximum minus the minimum. It's just the radius of the biggest circle we have. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a box around that. Okay, so thanks for watching. And if you want, head over to the example video where we put this knowledge into practice.